Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel, continuing with the series of interviews. Here is with me today a legendary dance couple and also two wonderful people, the charming Michael Barr and the icon of elegancy, oh. the Vicky Barr. Oh dear. Thank you very much for being here. It's a pleasure. And that's it with all of my guests. I always start from the very beginning. So if I can start with you, Michael, and just say the very first your dancing steps, how did it all start? Well, my parents went to the local dance school and they advertised uh, a course of lessons for children in the either the, I can't quite remember, it was Easter holiday or the Christmas holiday. Anyway, so we went along and I went with my brother and the friend's children, so the whole team of us. And it just so happened that our local dance school was run by a couple called Sydney and Dorothy Winter, who ran a very successful social school, but their real passion was training children for competitions. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we'd done a few medals, we went into competitions and it went on. So how there. old were you when you I was nine when, when I nine. started. But the thing about Sydney Winter, he was a very clever, witty, funny man. Uh, ended up being a, a languages teacher, actually. Very talented man, played quite good golf, played the piano rather well, uh, and a real, a, a real character. Uh, and his wife, Dorothy, had been a, she came from a family of teachers, school teachers and so forth. So she was rather academic. So that when I look back at it, the mixture was, was good, because he was funny, he made me laugh. And Dorothy uh, was very strong in technique, as he was, but that That's was good. where you get your wittiness. Second. Is that where you're getting your wittiness? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't, know. I, don't know. I don't know. But I, 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 what I do think is, in a lesson, whether you're giving a lesson or receiving the lesson, humour is very oh, helpful. Sorry. I yeah. think once you're relaxed, you can teach better. And once you're relaxed, you can learn better. Yeah. I think if you feel stressed or under pressure, you can't really absorb information. So yeah. I think I was, I was very lucky. That was the beginning of it. Mm. And how did it start for you then, Ricky? Where did you go? Well, I started when I was really young. I started at the local, like all the girls do, ballet, tap and acrobatics. And uh, I continued with that until I was about ooh, 10, I should think. <coughs> me. And then I started ballet classes at a different school. And I used to go with my school friend. And then she moved. And I didn't want to go by bus on my own. <laughs> So I was then at my secondary school and I was talking to another girl in my class who happened to be Janet Glee's sister, Evelyn Wade. Mm. And she said, I go to dancing lessons, but it's not ballet. I said, it doesn't matter what it is. So I went with her to a lady called Rita mm. Pover, who was a fantastic teacher uh, for ballroom lessons. And I started and did all my medals. And then rather like Michael, I thought I wanted to go further, I wanted to do competitions. Um, and I was always, in, I was so impressed when I used to watch on the television, we had a, a program called the Victor Sylvester Dance Club. And he used to use a different lady each week to show a little step. And they had beautiful sparkling shoes on, <laughs> full of rhinestones. And, uh, and those three ladies were, one was Brenda Winslade, one was Doreen Freeman, and one was a lady that you may not know called Christine Norton, mm -hmm. and they were all very beautiful. Uh, so from that, I wanted to do competition dancing, and then that's how it went on from there. Then I did competition dancing. Yeah. From so you danced at that point solo, or you had some like the, uh, different partners? Sorry, oh, no, we weren't in the same school. So yeah. So we, no. from no, you where? he's a little older than me, so he was junior <laughs> before me. Ah. <laughs> not much older. So did you live quite far apart at oh, that yeah, time? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I lived in northwest London. Right. And Vicky lived in East London. Uh -huh. So how did you eventually now two mess? Well, that's, that's a, quite interesting. We, we've both been, uh, we kind of vaguely knew each other because we've both been junior champions of mm -hmm. the international, for example, mm -hmm. which we just had. Um, and then we both danced with other people as amateurs. And then my partner went to America. I don't know what happened to yours, I can't remember. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, I discovered through Len Armstrong, funnily enough, I think, that yeah. um, Vicky was without a partner. So I therefore contacted her and then we finally started dancing when I was 20 and Vicky was 18. Mm -hmm. right. So we... individually up to then you were winning juveniles and juniors. Yes. Yes. Well, 
Yeah. I didn't dance as a juvenile in competitions. Right. I danced as a, only started as a junior. Right. Michael, of course, in the days when he was a juvenile, it was just under sixteen. So you've got these grade. tiny little mm. children mm. against sixteen-year-olds. Mm. So mm. that's and, and interestingly, the Blackpool on the Monday night. You had the junior championship on the Monday night of the May Festival. There was no separate junior festival. Mm -hmm. I showed you how it's grown. Yeah. It was just the one competition, mm -hmm. junior yeah. ball, on the on Monday, Monday night of the May Festival. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and at that point, you danced ballroom and Latin, or you sure. straight away and you just ballroom? No, ballroom and Latin. No, we did ballroom and And did you equally like both, or you just. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I did. I equally liked liked both. Yes. I think I, I always did, preferred yeah. ballroom. I think you probably always did prefer ballroom. I prefer ballroom, enjoyed right? Latin. Yeah. And we danced Latin. Yeah. Well, right professionally, through, yeah. And we turned pro, still doing. Yeah, we're still Latin. doing Latin. Yeah. But it was yeah. always a secondary thing for us. I think. I think what happens, you, I suppose, you do competitions and then you possibly do better in one style than the other, and then unless you're going to actually do ten. 10 dances seriously, you make a choice which one you, you want to go And with. how was difficult enough? So you started a new partnership, you're dancing together. Mm. How easy or difficult uh, was to get that molded well, together? Mm, I thought this, it'll keep me dancing until I find something better. I thought. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> because the I, because I thought, I thought, he's too tall for me. I, thought, I said she's too short yeah, for me. So I thought, short. well, okay, this, uh, it, it's, well, it'll keep us both, keep us both dancing. And then unbeknown to me, Michael entered us, entered us in the under 21 at Blackpool. Five we, weeks. We'd only been together a short time. Wow. Five uh, weeks. So and you did not know that? Well, I didn't know he'd enter. Anyway, he entered right. us and we danced in it and we finished second. Oh. So that was quite encouraging. And then we've, um, Keep we've, going. we've been We're still, <laughs> still not quite sure. But. <laughs> So how did that all do, let's say, into family? What, did, did you instantly fell in love with Vicky or was that... Uh, I think I quite liked her no. from the beginning, but I had to work at it a bit <laughs> to persuade you, her. You didn't like I had a you. Different, I, had oh. a, I had a boyfriend who wasn't a dancer at the time. Oh, right. And uh, for a, a couple of years or so, yeah. So, um, yeah. I think, yeah I but think, she couldn't I resist. Think, really I think she wore me down. <laughs> And then, so of course you were from different regions, north and east, oh. and so where did you then decide to locate as into practice? No, no, we, we, we kept living with our parents, right. and then we had no money to do otherwise, right. Um, so we, right the way through until we got married, mm. as one did in those days, uh, <laughs> one lived, uh, you know, with the parents. Right. So we, I was round the, before the M25, the North Circular, round that motor, backwards and forwards two or three times a week, well, we, we often used to meet in London, actually. Mm, Hammersmith um, Palais, we used to meet. Hammersmith often, Palais yeah. or various other yeah. practice places mm. in London, yeah. Mm. And then, of course, later on, I mean, every dancer has, has visited your famous Telemark studio. Oh. So, again, what made you realise or, or that was always your dream to have a studio at home? Well, I think uh, I remember going to Holland to two or three places where the studio was connected in, very often in Holland with a living accommodation above mm -hmm. uh, and I thought wow well, this looks quite a good option um, but my main concern was I didn't want to get into a rental situation because you know anywhere in the southeast of England or around London this is very difficult so we didn't necessarily want to have a studio with a home mm -hmm. what we wanted to do was to have a studio that we could buy so mm -hmm. that that was the criteria really and then um, we tried to buy all sorts of places, uh, church halls and this and the other. Mm. And then eventually we found Telemark that we have now. Uh, and yeah, we've been here 35 years, I think. Mm. Yeah, I remember really? that two yeah. years yeah. <laughs> many times. All right, so let's just go a little bit now into your maybe dancing. So obviously you climbed all the steps into the victories and you had many of them. And is there any particular memorable, most memorable victory that you've had? And, uh, no, I, I, I can remember certain moments about yeah. performances mm. going right back. I remember dancing in that youth when we just went together. Mm. Uh, the very I, first I, competition, right? Together, yes. yeah, mm. at Blackpool. And um, I'd not danced for a couple of years, so here we are, we're dancing. And I can still remember, it may, may sound strange, the moment while we're dancing around, I thought, yeah, this is what I want to do. So I do remember a certain moment where I thought, yeah, I'm really enjoying this, this is what I want to do, and that was the moment I decided mm. to stay with it, yeah. mm. even if we were mismatched. 
for that. <laughs> <laughs> that must be a wonderful feeling when you dance and you actually feel, yes, I, I really like dancing. Oh, yeah. well, one or two odd occasions when the dance has gone rather well, I think that I think I remember the performance is not not the result particularly. Mm -hmm. Of course, you remember it have a disastrous <laughs> result. I remember that as well, but primarily, I think it's the. So, do you uh, remember most memorable performance? Okay, you said you remember that at the first competition, but any other professional deal where you really thought, I no, I'm proud of myself. I did everything I want, or it mm -hmm. feels good. There was a, a Worlds in Tokyo, I think, where we danced quite well mm -hmm. on one or two other occasions. Yes, I remember a few when we didn't think we danced quite yeah, so well. Yeah, there were certainly some when we were not not very happy at all. Happened, but but I think that's what happens everybody, in those isn't days? it? Like how it, you know, it's interesting for all the competitors. How did you how do you cope with those situations where actually you really feel like there is nothing I can do? It's just not going well, and you still mm. have to carry on. Mm. Mm. Well, I can't find out why. That's, so yeah, back um, to the drawing board. Really, well, um, I used to keep notes. Yeah. I've got some now where. Before a competition, I would write down what we're going to achieve tonight. Not not result, but mm -hmm. what we're going to try. You'd be more relaxed, try not to, you know, whatever it was. Fairly simple ideas, write those down. And then when you turn over the page, on the other side, I'd write the notes of what the reality was. Right. Oh, still too, still too stiff, still <laughs> whatever it was, still, you know, didn't like this, tango, yeah, nightmare, you know, <laughs> whatever it was, I'd write down. And then... Uh, as we go back to lessons, I would try and pursue those, um, or sometimes I'd write down next to it, um, I must ask such and such a person about so and so, or I must mm. ask this teacher about that. Mm. So I tried to do it, in, or we tried to do it in some kind of structured yeah. way. Mm -hmm. It didn't always work exactly, yeah, but that's what I tried to do. Yeah. But on the actual day of the competition, if it really goes wrong, how do you deal with that? How did you deal with that? Uh, I, I think what might help sometimes with that, the more you know, the easier it is, of course, because you can identify then what's what's going wrong once you know once you know what you're looking for and you think, oh yeah, okay, so just try that. But I think the worst thing is when you don't really know, when you, in mm. your earlier days, when it goes wrong and you think, ah, oh, what, what are we going to do? What mm. are we going to try mm. now? And it's, it's, sometimes you try things and it makes it worse. Um, uh, occasionally it'll I, get I can, better on its I own. I can but... describe one of the worst evenings, dance-wise, and that was the first time at Blackpool as professionals, mm. we had a kind of chance of winning. The first time, the chance of winning, not the first time. No, no, the first time we had a, a real possibility mm -hmm. to win. But some very good couples, a guy particularly called Byron Charlton, who was a very lovely dancer. Uh, but we had a chance to win. And we were fully prepared for the competition, I would say. Absolutely mm -hmm. fully prepared. We do the first waltz, I feel exhausted. Oh, no. I'm so nervous. Mm -hmm. After all those years of competing, I'm still that nervous. But I felt I felt I got no legs. Oh. Frightening. Mm -hmm. um, but that was a great learning experience. That mm. never happened again. Mm. But uh, and then we just survived. Okay, we survived. Yeah, managed yeah, to win the competition. But I was very disappointed with how yeah. we danced. But it was brought about by yeah. nervousness. Yeah. Now I learned to channel that, or we learned mm. to channel mm. that into a positive energy. Right. And I sort of studied it a bit and thought about how right. you could do that. Um, so it became a play. It was a learning experience, but yeah. on the night it was a nightmare because the more the more I felt exhausted, the more nervous I got, the more nervous I got, the more exhausted I felt, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so on. So that, yeah. that was one of the worst uh, dancing nights. I yeah, would say. definitely, yeah. definitely, mm. yeah. Definitely. And on the your practice um, nights or days when you used to come back from competition. So what was your main sort of um, a principle how did you practice did you just used to do more stamina or how about, i mean so totally was different mm. days than the now people practice but did you have certain ways of practicing so and yeah. not arguing or arguing no, no, i don't know no, no. <laughs> I, I think you need two types of two practice types. you need the analytical type of practice mm -hmm. where you're taking things apart that haven't gone well or trying to improve things and then i think you also need the type of practice where you dance and you don't stop if it feels awful so that you have that build up as well as, as the stamina. I mean, these in days... In amongst are, other people. In amongst other right. people. Yes. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Definitely. Like in the reality practice. of being on the floor with other people. Yeah, definitely. Mm. 
definitely. But I think these days it's different people spend a lot more time in gyms and physically yeah. working what out. What do you think of that, about that? Well, we didn't used to do that. We did do we did do a little bit of, we had this, that thing called the um, Canadian exercise thing, the Canadian yeah, mountain. Yeah, and we used to go limited. a little bit of running, limited, uh, mm -hmm. under our own steam. We didn't have any special advice, which these days perhaps, we, do. perhaps we would have. But we always imbued that physical training mm -hmm. as like an insurance policy if it wasn't going well. Because yeah. when you're really dancing well, when it's on song and everything is timed beautifully, it, it's relatively <laughs> easy. It's on the nights when you're mistiming things and you're, uh, you're um, struggling. struggling with each other for whatever reason. That's the time that you need the backup of being strong enough to, to cope with it on the bad nights. On the good nights, <laughs> that's lovely. <laughs> Did you always agree on things? Or, or? No, of course not. No, no. no of course not. No. Um, and how would you deal with the disagreement? Would would it generally be like, let's say, somebody always wins more than the other? No, no, I, no I, I, don't, I don't. I don't. It was ever competitive in that. Not in that, but it's no. like. Um, I don't know. We always came to some sort of conclusion, or we. Oh, on the actually on the odd occasions, or not on the on the occasions when it didn't, we didn't used to go through it, did we? We'd sort of sit down and okay, let, let that moment go, or even go home sometimes and think, oh, you're, yeah, not gonna, yeah. you're not going to do anything tonight, it's just too, yeah, you're just too aggressive yeah. tonight, we might as well go yeah. home, we're solving nothing now. Yeah, you've um, got to practice uh, productively, I yes, think. Yes. The hours you spend practicing are no good if it's not... That normal. again, I think, is having something to practice, a clear idea of what you're trying to practice, so that you are, um, it's constructive, Practice and constructive criticism is very, it's very apart. easy to tear each other apart because yeah. uh, we're all mm. human and emotional, mm. and mm. you always think it's the other person's fault, but mm. you have to sort of look inward sometimes mm. and think, otherwise, it can destroy you. Mm. You can and destroy course, each other, yeah. So, sometimes, I mean, probably could have some arguments or disagreements, or you, you felt a little bit disappointed, and then, of course, you have to come home together. And mm. how did you oh, manage no. to separate that? That yeah. was oh, never that, that, no. That, that was, no, that was. I, I do remember that once. Once we turned yeah. pro and we did all this stuff, I thought when we were married, uh, we never were married. Uh, no, we never. Uh, there, there was a shut off. Yeah, yeah. and you come home with your, with your life. Definitely. Otherwise, you go mad. I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, it didn't mean I. I didn't lay awake at night worrying about it. <laughs> and, um, that, that happened to a degree, mm. but mm. not in an argumentative way. I don't think. No. Uh, once you got home, yes. just get on with life. Sure. Know? I mean, occasionally after shows. If it hadn't gone well, oh, the few, sometimes was, the shirts would the shirt go would flying the floor, across right. the floor. <laughs> it had gone badly. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the, the worst memory of some kind of show performance where everything was going wrong on the day? And, and um, in a funny, maybe, even we, way. We, we, <laughs> well, this is way on in our career. We, we flew to Vancouver, got off the plane, did a show. Silly. Well, I was off balance walking on. <laughs> Never mind dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so you got off, a, off that long flight. Music starts and you dance. Well, that was a disaster, yeah. <laughs> no. no, no, that was, that not, was no good. I think we never did that again. No, we it's didn't. not a we, great we idea. Learned, I do remember walking on feeling off balance. Oh, this is not, this yeah. is not good, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and you had a funny bad. experience or funny memory. Well, yes, I'll tell you a funny one. When we yeah. first, in our er, very early days of dancing together, talking about practice, um, we'd agreed to meet at Hammersmith Palais. So I went from my home. And Michael came from his home when we met at Hammersmith Palais. So we started to practice. And I said, apparently, I said, oh, it's awful. So Michael, apparently, Michael said to me, well, what's awful? I said, all of it. <laughs> so he said, well, we might as well go home then. And he went and put his shoes on and he went home. <laughs> oh, that's it. Well. Yes, he did. I, don't know. I never forget that. Yeah. That was early days. Yeah. Early days. Yeah. And also, I now I always I, I remember from videos what I've seen and pictures, and also a lot of people talking girls, especially. You have always very elegant, beautiful dresses. Okay. Now, it was that always your ideas. You had a good design, and where did you get this idea? Okay, when in the very early days, I made my own dresses. Very very early days, and then. Um, I had a couple of dresses made from a lady called Myra Chat, who used mm. to make a lot of the dresses. But then eventually, uh, a girl called Helen Ritchie, who was a Latin dancer, now Australian, mm -hmm. she now lives in Australia, she used to make them for me, and she designed them. She was really, Very really talented. 
very, very talented. Um, and then when she stopped making them, when she was too busy with her own uh, things that she was doing, her own career, um, she still used to design them for me. And a lovely young lady called Jackie used to make them for me, who unfortunately is no longer no longer with us. So I was lucky. Your dress always looked different, always yeah. different style. Helen, Helen was, was, clever, Helen was clever, very clever. Clever designer, wasn't she? She was terrific. Yeah, very, very good. Yeah. But early days, I made my own, but <laughs> not <laughs> latterly. Today's dresses, no, which are today the dresses are fabulous, aren't they? Yeah, for sure. Fan fabulous. Fantastic yeah. dresses today. Beautiful. Yes, and a little bit now, maybe going into actual dance itself. So, what's for you? What was always your priority in dance? Of course, at different couples, that's how you develop your style, I guess. But what is priority for you in in your dance? Hmm. Well, I think uh, the way you dance, based on good technique, will always depend on your personalities and your physique, I guess. That will obviously um, determine how you dance, time, how it comes it out, how, how the end result looks. comes out. Yeah. But yeah. always based upon very strong techniques. That mm. you, can, you can only be as good as your technique allows mm. you to be, which you, you know mm. so well. Uh, so it is the technique that releases you and allows you the possibility to do many things. Without strong technique, you don't have that possibility. Mm. So I think once the technique is at a sufficient level, then you can dance how you want to dance. So you and I may wish to dance somewhat differently, uh, but based on great techniques. So I think I, I realised that early on. Mm. Um, and once I started to feel, if you like, on balance, well, I feel I've got a chance to do something with it and turn it into how I'd like it to be. I think always the driving force for me from a very young age has been music because I've always liked uh, big band music and jazz. That's my mm -hmm. sort of thing. And it's quite strange that the first record I bought when I was probably about I don't know, maybe 10 or 11 years of age, was Earl Bostick, great jazz saxophonist, yeah. playing Flamingo. Now, that's not normal music no, for a young no, boy. No. To, so, so that was a tremendous influence, that kind of music. And I think that's really what, what I was into. Yeah, because yeah, I think the ultimate goal has got to be great musical dancing. Mm. It's got so. to be that. And I think your way up to that is by getting good technique. So I think the technique is the first rung of the ladder, really, isn't it? Getting yeah. the technique right, that's the beginning of the journey to get you to be able to produce what you're capable of producing uh, and um, uh, exploiting the music, getting the music out. Um, so I know that I'm always drawn to people that are musical dancers. That warmth and musicality yeah, always yeah. draws me to them. But um, you've got to have the other things in place to be able to do that successfully. Yeah. And did you take any, uh, of course it's popular now, and again, uh, did you take any maybe separate classes as in uh, music or in um, for, in other styles no, or anything to develop your thoughts, no, or you I've, just studied yourself? No, I tended to pursue those things yeah. having retired, right. looked into some physical things a bit more uh, and musical things mm. a bit more after the event, which is mm. strange really. Mm. Probably some of the things I read in later years which just might sound rather conceited. I thought I'd discovered those yes. myself yes. through right. things, through experience. Yes. And yes. then I read uh, various people. Oh, they were writing about this 100 years ago. Yeah, Alexander right. Technique. Yeah, for example, Gilates, Alexander yeah. Yeah. All that. Yeah. But yeah. We, I wasn't really into that too much while, while we were dancing. So certain discoveries about posture or whatever, mm. whatever it may be. Um, I thought they were my personal discoveries. Right. When they were, so probably had we done more of that background reading mm. at an earlier age, we better. may have got a bit better a bit earlier. Right? Yeah. I don't know. Mm. I think things move on, don't they? Yeah. Yes. Of I course, mean, yes. Uh, every bit of wide experience you can get. It, it, I would encourage it, yeah. all couples, to, yeah, to read yeah. and to look into different things. Yeah. Uh, look at some of what sports people do and. Uh, musicians right. do. Yeah. yeah, all knowledge is, is never wasted. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. definitely. And so, what was your uh, main uh, team of uh, teachers? Obviously, you had fewer. So well, we were fortunate fewer, enough to have a very this. long, <laughs> a very long career. So <laughs> they sort of died as we went along. So, <laughs> so, so it changed a bit. No, I mean the tremendous influence when we first started together was Len Scribner. 
then was a yeah. tremendous uh, influence, yes, really. So yeah. although we've both been uh, junior champions, I mean, I didn't know anything. You do what you do when yeah, you're a junior. Yeah. Then by the time I'm 20, I went to Len. And um, yeah, this was tremendous mind opening experience. Mm. I think he was a teacher years ahead of his time, actually. Mm. Uh, so that was a great experience. And then, of course, as it went on, we went on to the former champions. Right. Bill Irvin and Peter, Peter Eagleton yeah. and so forth and Anthony, because yeah. they were the champions that I looked yeah. at and yeah. admired yeah. so it was rather logical and obvious to go to people like that and hear what they had to say mm -hmm. yeah. right. and then of course came to the time where you retired and you stepped on the floor to judge your first competition now how did that feel it's obviously because it's a totally different perspective now well it's very emotional so actually very, because the first year after we'd retired at Blackpool and next year I'm judging Blackpool, yeah, so, yeah. which was a, a very lovely tradition in those days yeah. that the, fourth, the retiring champion mm -hmm. was invited to adjudicate and because you had to do the whole thing afternoon and evening because it wasn't quite as big as it yeah. is today. Um, that was uh, stressful mm -hmm. um, and that's the, that's the mm -hmm. best you're ever going to be I think it's an adjudicator because you still remember very clearly all the pain and all the anxiety yes. and yes. how important it is to everybody yes, out there. Yes, it's their life, their and, livelihood. And then you just do your best. Yeah. Mm. But, but also, did it make you uh, understand also, if you think, because when you're competing in dancing, you're thinking uh, certain things. And then, of course, when you look now at that dancing as a comp uh, judge, you understand more yeah. of the things. I think the well. priorities mm -hmm. become crystal clear. Yes. Mm -hmm. You realise that some sometimes quite superficial things yeah. have a disproportionate importance because mm. you're looking and you like mm. it or you don't like it mm. in that much time. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, Tough job though, judging. It's, judging is hard. I think mm. it's tough. Mm. I think it's a tough job, yeah, yeah to really... But very important yeah, job. Assessing the time available. It's, uh, it's very important, yeah, mm. but it's a tough job. Mm. Yeah, and a lot of soul searching. Yeah. And then uh, when you retired, you still carried on with doing shows for some mm. time. Oh, quite a long time, mm. yes, you did, didn't you? Yeah, that was prob few. probably our best dancing yeah. in the next uh, yeah. four or five years. Yeah. Uh, then eventually you yeah. end up to too, too much teaching, too many other things, yeah. and not practicing enough, and so yeah. that went. But those four yeah. or five years after we uh, retired, I really I think enjoyed. all the pressure's off, and it's... Yeah, nothing to prove, just yeah. dance and enjoy it and hope the people enjoy yeah. it, which yeah. is rather yeah. nice. Yeah. 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 And then, of course, uh, you know, uh, quite a few decades now uh, since you first started. Mm -hmm. you You're very polite. <laughs> <laughs> and do you feel, well, it's a wrong question, of course dance changed and evolved, yeah, changed certain things definitely mm. better, but certain mm. things not mm. necessary, some mm. things are gone, I think, worse. Yeah. So in your eyes, what things gone better and what's gone not so bad. Oh, everybody's better prepared, they're fitter, stronger. Mm. Uh, yeah. But that that's a two-edged sword, we would say, mm -hmm. because yeah, fitter and stronger, mm -hmm. therefore, even when it's not very good, they can hold it together and, and bash it around the floor sometimes, <laughs> right. um, which is not really desirable. Mm -hmm. But uh, everybody, even down to juniors, can all perform. Yes. They can all put on a show and perform. I don't necessarily yeah. like what comes out at the end, but that's a tremendous ability to mm -hmm. to perform. And mm -hmm. you don't see anybody looking unprepared, really, no. or, no. or completely out of their depth. You just don't don't see that. And of course, the the base of the pyramid is much bigger now. There are so many talented, world so much talent. Yes, There's more the talent in our yeah. world now. Yes. Or around Latin than there's, yeah. there's ever been, I'm sure. Yes. Um, and some we like the way it's developed, and some we don't. Yeah. But but the the pool of talent is huge, mm. tremendous, because people come from almost everywhere. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but I think I think in a way, as you said, the pool is such a big pool, and it in a way gives us a little bit of hope for the future. That oh, sure. uh, because sure. there was definitely less people when mm. you died. Yeah, sure. Yes. Sure. Yes. Oh, no. yes. Uh, in dancing world, some I like all the difficulties we've had the last yes and it will always years. change and oh, it must do as a living develop. it's got to, it's a living, to change and, develop. and some yeah. things we like and some things we won't like mm. i guess that's every generation does that mm. and some things we would prefer as it was some things we think are, are, are better and yet, yeah and yet still and we've cleared it recently this last week with all the things we've seen when you see 
beautiful, musical dancing, two people dancing in a stress-free way, mm -hmm. it gets an, a reaction. Mm -hmm. People recognise, they may not know what they're really mm -hmm. seeing, but um, it gets a reaction. I think, I think people recognise it. I think anybody who does anything well, it doesn't matter if it's dancing or whatever it is, um, they make the difficult look easy. Mm -hmm. So it's the effortless performance, yeah. the, the power of performance, um, of course, very full volume of full musical, but in an effortless way. I think when it looks hard work, yeah. uh, that for me is not, if it looks aggressive and hard work, then it's not the, the type that I would like. But, yeah. uh, but powerful, yeah, sure. But mm, looking easy. Effortless power. Yeah, yeah, effortless yeah. power. It's a cliche, exactly. but uh, yes, it's a cliche, yeah, but yeah, sure. nevertheless yeah. true. Yeah. And let's say, what would you like to see in the next 10 years in dancing? Ooh, yeah. Oh, that's a question. I would like, <laughs> oh, I would like to see the development be through greater musical expression. It cannot become any more physical or any more, yeah, physical, I, I think. Mm. That's not or faster. No. I would love to see the construction improve. Yes, definitely. The construction of several of the dances yes. is, is might be an awful really. Mm -hmm. Quick step is a Yeah, there's no step in the really. step and swing. And this step. is a fantastic dance mm. because or could be. Yeah. Because yeah. you've got so many different rhythmic different possibilities. Rhythms, yeah. So yeah. if I see the same thing all the way around, I find that very boring. Yeah, so they and start running around. Yeah, this is very boring. They've got a promenade and they they're just run boring. around, yeah. step pop, chassis, which is very boring. Very boring. And the, the, when I think back to the, some of the great quick step yeah. dancers, Peter Daywood and Brenda Winslow, Anthony Hurley, mm. the changes in the rhythmical rhythm, change is so wonderful. interesting. Wonderful. The clever wonderful. things with yes. the, the feet. Yeah, there's so many possibilities. Yeah. To have that all swept away yeah, and just so. go do 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 yeah. do 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 So yeah. I'd like to see that improve. Yeah, tango definitely. is the other one, of course. Okay. Um, mm. When you see a real tango, and I've seen a couple of those really very good ones in the last week mm -hmm. at these competitions, uh, yeah, it's outstanding, mm. fabulous dance. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so That's agree. what I would like to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Yeah, and yeah, and and in the effort to produce fullness that they like to produce or power call it what you like um i'd like to see the quality and the class kept in it so that even if it's even if they are covering the floor a lot i'd still want to see beautiful feet articulation oh, of feet wow. and i'd love to see the tail feet. suits change oh yes oh <laughs> oh, oh. 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 fred astaire tail. not Yes, you want to look like Fred Astaire, not Charlie Some Chaplin. Some of them have a zip there. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just but it's the so shape, isn't it? I mean, the Fred Astaire, the, the shoulders going in this way, but the Charlie Chaplin, little shoulders and going out yeah. that way I with think the trousers. It, was, was it, it doesn't look good. Was it Coco Chanel? I don't really know about these things. Who said that it wasn't about colours? It's about no, it's about no, no, it's not about yeah. size. It's about proportion. proportion. No, and no, I think proportion that's of a tail suit. Important. And indeed, the ladies uh, yeah. it's terribly important. important. Yeah, terribly important. And yeah. you, you get that wrong with the collar, and the collar of the shirt doesn't sit right. And mm. sometimes the shirts don't even look very clean. Mm. I don't like. Yeah. Mm. Well, the way you you complain sometimes about the a collar stuff stud stuff. showing at the back and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> and the zip. Yeah, oh, the zip. Well, yeah, the zip. <laughs> No. And yeah. this sounds very old fashioned. Yeah, like, <laughs> no, but it's it, but the all shape. of the things they could of course then evolve. But I mean, we may perhaps you don't want this big because at one point they're quite wide tail, yeah. but they can no. all of a sudden be styled. No, no, no. Yeah. But keeping as you said proportions, 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 and I agree, yeah. even yeah. with the dresses sometimes. If, is this, yeah. if this is narrower than this, it doesn't look yeah. right, does it? No, no, no sure. No. I mean, yes. Yeah, so that's fabulous. Uh, wish for for the for the dancers <laughs> in the future to wh whatever going to watch this video perhaps in ten years time. Oh, to, to, that's to a frightening thought. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> to listen, that uh, w will we see all of that improvement in tango and in quick step and and all the technical things and the feet. And is there anything else you would like to wish before we say goodbye to the viewers? Well, yeah, well, well to, just to be serious for a moment. Yeah. I'd like the world to become a much yeah. better place so that everybody who wants to dance can travel around the world freely mm, and dance yeah. in an unimpeded way. That would yeah. be my greatest that wish. Be, yes. yeah. I can't yeah, wish for anything yeah. better than that, that everybody will feel free yeah. to go to any country they like yeah. 
and dance and pursue their love and, of dancing. Yeah, as, and that's what I would like to say, that they will continue to love dancing. It's not just about results, but to actually yeah. love it and strive for the beauty of the dance. And never, never lose the joy of it, really. Yeah. Thank you. Happy dancing, I'd like to say. <laughs> well, that's on these beautiful words. We say goodbye for this session uh, and thank you one more time, Michael and Vicky, to, to, to talk to us. It's our pleasure. Yes, and goodbye from us today. Bye. Bye. Bye.